Hey everyone, my name is Justin and today's Photoshop tutorial is actually going to be a bit more of a Photoshop experiment but along the way you're going to learn some cool things about the brush tool and a setting called color dynamics in the brush window and we're going to use it to create something that kind of looks like that worm from the Slither IO game. So I'm going to grab my brush tool here. You could also just press B on your keyboard to select it. And If you open up the settings here, you could click the cog wheel and press reset brushes and press OK just to get back to the default Photoshop brushes just to make sure we're all on the same page here. And if you click one of the regular circle brushes with 100% hardness and whatever size works well for your canvas, I'll show you what it looks like. So make sure my foreground color is white so it shows up against this black background. And if I paint, you'll see that that's what it looks like. Now that's if you're using a mouse pad. This button here is pr uh, pen pressure for size. So if you're using a Wacom tablet or a, pr a pen pressure tablet, you can see that it'll look like that. So since I have one, I'm going to use a Wacom tablet and that's where you're going to see the pen pressure come into play. And I think it'll just be funner for you guys to watch that way. So this is our default brush. And if we open up the window brush panel, we could see Photoshop gives us a preview of kind of what the brush stroke will look like. Now in this brush window, you could see all these different settings for you to create whatever random and unique brush you want. And there's so many different possibilities. But today I'm just going to focus on this one here called color dynamics. And this is a way for you to add color variation to your brush. So I'm just going to start off on all 0% just to show you guys gradually what it does. So as you can see, we're everything is 0% and we're just working white and our background color is black. So it's still just a normal brush. I'm actually going to change my foreground and background colors to two colors of my choice just to show you guys how this works. So I'll change the foreground color to a blue and then I'll change the background color to a red. So if I brush, you see that it's just red. Now let's see what happens when I turn the foreground and background jitter up a little bit. So I'll turn this up to 50%. So now what you're going to see is a little bit of blue hop in the picture. And the best way I can explain this to you is if my foreground color is red, it's going to go 50% towards the other color, but it's not going to go fully there. And it's just going to jitter between the two. So that's why you don't never see that full bright blue. It's kind of like halfway between red and blue. Now if I switch to blue as my foreground color, you'll also see that it never really gets to red, it only gets halfway to red. Now if we turn it up to 100% jitter, you'll see that the color reaches all the way to red and all the way back to blue. So now it no longer matters if red is my foreground color or blue is my foreground color, the line is going to look the same. So that's the foreground jitter and background jitter strength. And the next setting we have here is hue jitter. Now this will change the hue a little bit. So a little bit away from red and a little bit away from blue. So if I just put about 28% on there, you see some other colors start to appear in the mix like blues and greens, but it still kind of sticks towards that red and blue theme because we only have 25%. Now once you take this all the way up to 100%, it kind of no longer matters what your original color was because the hue is now 100% random, if you know what I mean. Now, another thing you can adjust is the saturation, and that's pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with Photoshop, is the saturation jitter is how much this color is saturated. So if there's zero jitter, it's just going to stay at the saturation levels of your original two colors. But if there's 100% jitter, you'll start to see some faded and pastel colors and some really bright colors as well. So that's another setting and now we're cranking it all up. The brightness jitter, if we crank that up to 100% as well, you'll start to see some really dark colors like black and some really bright colors appear as well like white right here. So if you have all of them cranked up to 100, it kind of no longer matters what your original colors that you picked were because it's so much random variables that you added in there. And that's kind of what gives it that slither IO feel. And this is kind of where the, I got the inspiration to make this little tutorial. But there's one more setting I didn't show you is purity. And that's simply kind of like saturation. So if I turn purity all the way down to zero, it kind of sucks the color out of everything. So now everything's black and white again. And if I turn purity up to 100, it kind of makes things a bit more 
dark and saturated but I don't really like to mess with it I like to leave it at zero one more thing is if you want to adjust the spacing between each circle is if you head over to the brush tips shape you can adjust the spacing so we could make it spaced out and then it kind of no longer looks like a, a worm as much or you can make it really spaced in like 10 percent and the circles are much closer together and it kind of gives a really cool look so the fun part about this is you can mess around and create your own little slither io type of brush worm so this is just something that i've been playing around with hopefully you guys learned a few things about all the different options you can have in the brush window and if you've never played around with color dynamics or didn't know what it did this maybe gave you some insight into what it does and so I don't know if you'll use it to this extreme with the circle brush but remember there's dozens of other settings to adjust about the brush not just the color dynamics and I'm sure in combination with something you could make some really awesome abstract arts or use it to just create that perfect color jitter in whatever brush you were creating. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like, share the video, and definitely subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. I'm just going to stay here and keep playing with this brush because it's really fun.